All right, this section is one of my favorite sections in the entire class. It's synthetic division. Now, this is a concept that I didn't even know until I think I was actually, I actually had my uh, degree, my undergraduate degree. I never used it. It had never been presented in the classes that I took in high school or college. It was when I was tutoring in, uh, in my graduate program that a student came in asking about synthetic division, so I had to learn it on the spot. And uh, since then, it's like I really like this. It's really fun. All it requires you to do is pay attention to your signs, and you go through this back and forth process of multiplying and adding. And it allows us to do division with polynomials in a very, very quick, uh, very quick way. Okay, so for us to really understand synthetic division, let's go back and let's consider let's consider an improper fraction like 45 over 7. Now, in the past, you might have had teachers that said, you need to write this in simplest terms. Well, to me, this is fine. But they would say, write it as a mixed number. And when you do the division, 7 goes into 45 6 times with a remainder of 3. And so you would say, this is 6 and 3 sevenths. Now, when we write a mixed number like this, what it really means is that you have six whole units and then you have a fractional part left over, three out of seven, okay? Now, in terms of words, in terms of the terminology that we have here, uh, we've got this, 45, that numerator is your dividend. What you're dividing by is called the divisor. This whole number part right here is called the quotient. And then you've got plus, so that three is the remainder. It's the remainder that we get from doing the long division. And it's over your divisor. Okay? So these are the words that we have. These are the words that we're going to be using when we're talking about division, and in particular, synthetic division. Okay, now when we would have this, we also talked about how we would check this, right? So how do, whoops, how do we check? Okay, well the way you would check to make sure that this is the same thing as 45 over 7 is that you would take your divisor, 7, you'd multiply it times your quotient, and you would add back in the remainder. And so when you do this check, 42 plus 3 equals 45, you get back to your original numerator. This is how we would always check to make sure that our conversion from the improper fraction to the mixed number was correct. So we have something very similar going on here. If I have a division problem, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to write your quotient plus your remainder over the divisor. If you have to check, right? So the, the checking aspect of this would say that your dividend your dividend is supposed to equal your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder okay your dividend is supposed to equal your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder. That's how you would check that. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because once we start talking about functions, and depending on how the problems are set up in my math lab, if they give you a division problem, you're going to write your quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Sometimes they're going to say, here's a function. Rewrite it. If I give you a divisor, what's the quotient and what's the remainder? And this is really important to us because in the next unit, we're going to be talking about finding solutions, finding zeros to a, uh, to a polynomial function. And what that means is that you're looking for divisors that are going to give you a remainder of zero. See, once we get a remainder of zero, then it really makes the polynomial smaller and easier to work with, and we can get the rest of the solutions. So uh, let's try to formalize this into what we're going to be doing here with synthetic division and dividing the polynomials. Okay. So here is this statement. You've got it in your notes that are available to you. It says that if f and g, if these guys are polynomial functions, it's 
polynomial functions such that the degree of g of x is less than that of f of x. Okay, So we've got two functions. One of them has a degree that's less than the other one. Then, okay, so if, now then, then there exists unique functions there exist, exist unique functions and we'll call them q of x and r of x such that when you take f of x divided by g of x you're going to get this unique relationship. You're going to get one function plus you're going to have another function over that divisor. And what we're saying right here is the same thing that I have at the top of the screen right now. So we're saying that f of x is your dividend, g of x is your divisor, and if you do this division you're going to get a unique quotient represented by q of x down here plus a unique remainder and you're going to write that over the divisor okay so there's this unique relationship that we have with these guys if you go back to the very top of this page when i had 45 divided by 7 there are unique answers to this there is a unique quotient with a corresponding unique remainder for that particular division problem Okay? You're not going to get anything else, no matter how often you try to divide 40, 45 by 7. You're always going to get the same stuff. And that's kind of what we're saying here. If you have a function, a polynomial function, divided by another polynomial function with a lesser degree, you're going to get a unique quotient and a unique remainder. Now, as we mentioned before, it would be really nice if the remainder were 0, but that's probably not going to happen all that often. Now there is this other relationship kind of like what I have up here in pink that says that we would then be able to rewrite our function as a product of that divisor times that quotient plus the remainder and then when you think about polynomials and you think of all the stuff that we've done with them so far this semester if I get a remainder of zero then this piece right here is gone and I've got this product. And so what that means is that if I ever get a remainder of zero, I have found a way to factor that polynomial function into two smaller or lesser degree poly polynomial functions. And that's uh, super awesome for us. Okay? So when we do this division, we are going to be focusing on this. Our focus will be on taking some polynomial function and dividing this by not just any polynomial, but one that is of this form, x minus k. So we're going to be looking at doing division with a linear factor, not even, not even just a linear factor, but one that has a coefficient of 1. Now there are workarounds for this if you had, say, 2x or 3x, or even if you had x squared. But for what we're doing in this class, we're going to be focusing just on this nice kind of linear factor we have right here. The thing you need to point out, we need to understand, is that you've got a minus here. And as we've seen in the past, when there's been a minus as part of the form, we're going to end up doing the opposite of what we see. Okay, And that's what we're going to see in the next video, is how do we do division? Okay, So stick around.